Hi, this is Elia Fishman, and welcome to our latest uh, vodcast. And this will be on pheochromocytomas. And I've spoken to you before about pheochromocytomas as part of our adrenal lectures, but I thought I would give a dedicated talk on pheochromocytomas. It's it's a very interesting topic, something we see a lot of, it seems, and something that can be very problematic. And this is in part a talk I gave at the ISCT meeting just the other week. There's been a lot written about pheochromocytomas, this article by Luang. Pheochromocytomas are considered the great mimicker of other adrenal tumors because of their varied clinical imaging and pathological appearances, accurate diagnosis can indeed be challenging. And there's no doubt that's the case. We all think about pheochromocytomas as hypervascular adrenal masses, and sometimes they're perfectly classic, but many times they're not. The other thing is we always think about pheochromocytomas as hypertension, and so most people will think, oh, the patient always has a good clinical history. But this is a Hopkins series in 70% of our cases, a pheochromocytoma was detected on an imaging study performed without suspicion of an adrenal lesion. The point is that we are seeing more pheochromocytomas as incidental findings than cases where the requisition says hypertension, rule out pheochromocytoma, or other symptoms of pheochromocytoma. So just look at that, 70% of new cases of surgically proven pheos were initially detected by serendipity. So again, we talk about incidentalomas, and so pheos you know, are gonna be one of the incidentalomas of the adrenal gland, not simply adenomas. A couple facts. Pheos peak incidence is in the 40s. It's the classic rule of tens, multicentric in 10% of cases. 10% of pheos are extra-adrenal, with 90% of them near the organ of zircocondyl. About 10% are malignant. Typical areas of spread would be to liver. About 10% are bilateral, and bilateral are usually syndromic. About 90% of pheos are sporadic, and 10% are part of syndromes. The typical syndromes we think about, von Hippel-Lindau syndrome, MEN type 2, neurofibromatosis, and the very unusual pheochromocytoma paraganglioma syndromes. Now, we also know that pheochromocytomas are one of the studies where lab values are so critical. Pheos secrete catecholamines, which result in hypertension, and there are elevated plasma catecholamine levels and 24-hour urine VMA and metanephrine levels in nearly all patients. Now, what about the imaging findings? We can occasionally see calcifications in pheochromocytomas, 10%. Again, another thing that makes 10%. The classic appearance is hypervascular on arterial phase imaging. So one thing about if you're suspecting a pheo, it's one of the reasons to do arterial phase imaging. Also, metastases from pheo, particularly to the liver, are often very vascular. One of the things I'll show you some examples, or at least let me mention now, you know, when we speak about adenomas, we talk about washout values. Well, it's very important to realize that pheochromocytomas are so vascular and wash out so quickly that if you use a washout value of 50%, you will call many pheos adenomas. So an important rule is, if your early phase imaging enhances more than 110 or 120, you better assume you're dealing with something other than adenoma and you very much better be concerned you're dealing with a pheochromocytoma. Also, in terms of visualization, it's hard to diagnose whether a uh, pheo is malignant or not unless we see sites of metastasis. So let me show you some classic examples. Here's a classic study, non-contrast CT, right adrenal mass. It could be anything. It could be an adenoma, I guess, in theory, lipid poor. It could be metastasis. It could be many things. But when you give IV contrast, here's arterial phase imaging, hypervascular, slightly necrotic. This is going to be a pheochromocytoma. Here it is in the coronal display. There's not a whole lot else that gives you vascular lesions in the adrenal unilateral. I guess if you had a renal cell carcinoma, perhaps, or hepatoma, they give you vascular adrenal metastasis. But when it's hypervascular like this, you better be thinking about a pheochromocytoma. And this case also shows you nicely on the 
early delayed phase imaging, look how quickly that lesion washed out. So again, theos can wash out very quickly. Another example, this patient has relatively poor fat planes, but look at that mass in the right adrenal gland, hypervascular. When you look at this, you almost say, could this be liver, could this be kidney? When you look at it a bit easier on the coronal view, it's a classic adrenal mass. This is a nice example of showing you central necrosis, hypervascular central necrosis. We do see a range of areas of necrosis in pheos, not uncommonly. Sometimes the entire lesion can be necrotic, sometimes just the central portion. I mentioned bilateral pheos. Here's a good example, bilateral pheos. The one on the left is very cystic, the one on the right is more solid. Again, this one is not very vascular, the patient had a history of neurofibromatosis. Again, it does make the point that pheos, even in the same patient, even with the same syndrome, can be variable in terms of appearance. And here's just another nice example. Now in this case, if you ask me the question, am I sure these are pheos, could this be metastasis? I would say yes, they could. Um, so again, it can be somewhat tricky. At times, there is overlap between pheo and other lesions. Now, I mentioned pheos can be cystic. Here's a good example of a cystic left adrenal mass. There's some peripheral enhancement present. The right adrenal looks normal. Here it is in a coronal view. It's a good size lesion, it's better than six centimeters. And again, could you call this definitively a pheo? I don't think so. Could it be metastatic disease? Yes. Could it be a hepatoma metastatic? Possibly. Could it be a primary adrenal carcinoma? There is a chance it could be that. Could it be an old bleed? There's a possibility. This is one of the more difficult lesions only looking at the images. And this lesion will not be followed. This lesion would indeed be removed. And this was a pheo. Or this example, this was an incidental mass. Look at the size of this lesion. I would have thought carcinoma. I would have said, well, if it was benign, you would say, could this be a bleed or something? But you know, this is coming out. This was a pheochromocytoma. So the point is to show you pheos can be large, can be smaller, smaller is in syndromes, but they can be cystic and necrotic, and that's not uncommon in incidental lesions, but it also could be in lesions that are syndromatic. So it's a range from hypervascular to cystic. Now, I mentioned before about washout values when we talk about pheochromocytomas, and this is a good example. This article, which is one of the key articles on looking at adenomas, excluded pheochromocytomas from the analysis because they felt that everyone knows that the patient has a pheo. Well, that's so wrong. So, for example, this case, look at the right adrenal. There's a one centimeter lesion, incidental finding. You really want to blow it off but it measures 50 Hounsfield units, so you're kind of stuck. Could this be a lipid-poor pheo? Or take that back, could this be a lipid-poor adenoma? Could this be a pheo? Could this be metastasis? All you know is you have a one centimeter lesion. Statistically, this is going to be benign. But you give the patient IV contrast and it's 164. I told you above 120, I don't care what the washout value is. And sure enough, when you look at this lesion, it washes out better than 50%. Again, you break the rule above 110 or 120. You better be thinking pheo. I do not call it an adenoma. This was a pheochromocytoma, one centimeter in size. And again, with pheos, another example, look how small this pheo is. Again, very vascular, up to 217. We don't care about the washout. Now, the history was good in this case for pheo, but regardless, sometimes patients with hypertension have adenomas, right? But when something is enhancing at this level, it's always, go to the bank with it, going to be a feel. Now, a couple of things. There's an article we wrote from Hopkins, uh, Dr. Norcutt, for incidental identified nodules on dual phase CT that was performed for hepatic pancreatic renal or vascular lesion imaging. You have two phases. The question was, could we distinguish between uh, some of the various incidental adrenal lesions, including pheochromocytomas. And here were some of the comments from that article. Adrenal nodules with features associated with pheo should prompt additional workup. If the arterial phase imaging is intensity is higher than that of venous, if arterial phase is above 115 or venous above 130, vascular lesions are heterogeneous, you've got to be thinking about a pheochromocytoma.
They mentioned that most adenomas are homogeneous, but sometimes so are pheos, but pheos are more likely to be heterogeneous, and I showed you a number of cases with pheos having cystic components. In this article, some of the conclusions were for indeterminate adrenal masses identified on dual phase imaging, higher attenuation during the arterial phase, arterial phase images over 110, and lesion heterogeneity should prompt consideration of pheochromocytomas. So it's hard to argue with that. It does make the point that the washout value rule needs to be very carefully employed. Again, under 100 or 110, it's not a problem. That rule works very well. Above 110, the rule is not going to be used. A couple other examples of pheochromocytomas I thought I'd show you. Nice left pheo, nice normal right adrenal, classic hypervascular, some modeled enhancement centrally, nicely shown on the coronal views. In terms of looking at the vascularity and determining benign versus malignant pheochromocytoma, that's not worked to date. And you can see in this case, we'll go from arterial coronals to venous coronals, and you can see how the lesion washes out. Also, most pheos we do see, we typically say functional is over 2 cm, not always the case. The small lesions are typically in patients with syndromes, but here's a good example of a larger lesion, again, hypervascular, areas of necrosis. If you said to me this is a adrenal carcinoma, a primary adrenal carcinoma, I would say it surely can be. Primary adrenal carcinomas can be cystic, necrotic, they can be hypervascular. So when you look at this lesion, I guess the key thing for me is putting pheo in the differential diagnosis and not just assuming it's an adenocarcinoma. One thing important to recognize is that when you have a lesion like this, it's coming out. No one is going to uh, treat conservatively. One thing that's important is whether it's done laparoscopically or open, if it's likely a pheo, it's probably gonna be done laparoscopically. Now in this case, you very nicely see the key neovascularity in the lesion, shown on the MIP imaging, and you can see that lesion as it washes out. So again, with pheo, central necrosis is not uncommon very nicely shown here as well. Now I mentioned before there are other lesions which can be very vascular in the adrenal gland. And one of them I have a couple examples of, and I think I've showed in a prior talk, are hemangiomas. I have like two cases of that. Both were operated on. They look like pheos. But one of the other lesions that can be would be metastatic disease. And the two we really think about are renal cell carcinomas and hepatomas. And in this article, they made the point with a threshold of 60% uh, for washout, um, one could make mistakes with metastasis. So again, you can call a lesion a pheochromocytoma when it's really a met. You can call sometimes uh, lesions as adenomas because of washout, but they're really metastatic disease. And again, you wanna be careful that rule of about 110 works well. Here's a lesion, patient has a renal cell carcinoma, nice renal mass, vascular adrenal lesion, 153. Okay, it's not an adenoma. Could be metastasis, could be pheo. It does wash out pretty quickly, down to under 70. And again, could this be a pheo? Could be an incidental pheo. Could this be an adrenal met? The answer is yes. This was metastatic renal cell to the adrenal. Okay, can be very difficult. And just, you know, an impressive example. And again, the 150 Hounsfield level attenuation could be seen with either a pheo or with metastatic disease. So again, very important. So I've showed you a number of cases. I've made a number of points showing you how pheos can be confused based on washout value with adenomas. I've shown you how pheos can be confused with metastatic disease, like metastatic renal cell carcinoma. I've showed you how pheos can be confused with almost any adrenal lesion because they may not be hypervascular, and there is this great spectrum of findings in pheochromocytoma. So hopefully, you have a better feel of things, and as I said, pheos are often incidental, these days more common as an incidental finding than as a rule-out pheochromocytoma requisition. So it's important to look carefully at the adrenal glands and make certain you're not picking up an incidental vascular lesion. And with that, I'll thank you very much for your time. Bye.